Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to building a Bluetooth to serial or UART bridge using an ESP32 and Arduino. And this is part two in a two part series. Before I get started, please check me out on Patreon where you can download the code from this video series as well as access other exclusive content from other videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you like what you see here, please hit the thumbs up for the video. All right, let's get started. Okay, in part one, we went over the building blocks for building our Bluetooth to serial or UART bridge. We did a demo of the bridge in action, communicating across a smartphone to the ESP32 connected to a computer. We then reviewed the bridge code. And in part two, we're gonna focus on command mode. So I'll do a demo of command mode. We'll review the code for command mode and also review the code for storing command settings in non-volatile memory. And just as a reminder, what command mode is, is a special mode you can enter in to change certain settings. Now, the only settings I set up were the Bluetooth device name, as well as the baud rate, as well as some other commands to print out help information and things like that. If you want, though, you can always build and add other settings that you want for your bridge code. All right, let's look at a demo. Okay, here is my ESP32 Forstronics dev board with the code loaded on it and running. You can see a serial monitor opened in the background. If you have any interest in the Forstronics dev board, I have videos on the different circuits on there and you can access all the design files on Patreon. All right, so I have my serial monitor. We have our serial monitor with the dev board that's running our code for our bridge. And so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to enter a plus symbol because this is the special character that puts us in command mode. So when the code first boots up, it prints out this message, which gives you information on settings and also gives you information on how to use command mode. By default, the code is in bridge mode. So I, if I connect to it with a Bluetooth device, I can start sending data you know, from the wired serial to the Bluetooth device and vice versa. But if I want to enter command mode to change or view settings, I entered this special character a plus. Now you could change it in the code to whatever you want. I just chose a plus. So I'm going to enter that and you can see we're entering command mode. So we, we're, right now we're not in bridge mode. So if you tried to send data across the bridge, it would not work until you exit command mode. All right, I'm going to enter a help or an H for the help menu is what I should have said. And so it prints out what we just saw in the introductory message. Let's say you're using it and you want to you know, later on print out the help menu for command mode. This is how you would do it. You can enter a uppercase H or a lowercase H. So that's the first thing we did in command mode. So we're still in command mode. I'm going to enter an N question mark. This command is going to give us the name of the Bluetooth device. So there it is, FT blue device. Now, if we look in the settings or how to use command mode, we can see an N equals with quotation marks will allow us to change the name of the Bluetooth device. We just queried the name. Next, we're gonna actually change the baud rate settings. So we're gonna use a B for accessing the baud rate settings and I'm gonna type in 57600. So we just pressed enter and you can see what we entered the baud rate. So right now we're in a baud rate of 115200 and we're going into 57600. Note that when you change the Bluetooth device name or the baud rate, you have to reset the device for it to take effect. So we're gonna change the baud rate, but first we're gonna make sure it, it captured what we entered. So I'm gonna do B question mark, and you can see it did. It did query the correct baud rate. This new baud rate has been stored in memory, and when the device starts up again from a reset or a cycling the power, it'll be using this new baud rate setting. And so that's what we're gonna show next. So there's the baud rate. And then I'm going to change it on the terminal before I shut the terminal down. So I'm changing it to 57600 because that's the new baud rate setting. I'm going to reset my dev board. There's the code. And I'm going to open up the serial port again. And look at this. So now it prints out. Now it's running at 57600. We know that that's true because I started the monitor at 57600. So that's a quick demonstration of how you use command mode. Let's look at the code for using command mode and how we did that as well as saving command settings to non-volatile memory. Okay, now we're looking at the code that we looked at in part one. And notice right in the beginning of the setup, we 
Initiate memory. And what we're doing here is actually, we're actually checking if memory has been used before. And the way we know if it's been used before is that we store a special character after the device is first powered up. And if we read that special character, we know that memory has been used before. So then we grab the baud rate stored in a global variable and the device name, which we store in a character array from memory. If it is the first time memory has been used, then we store the default device name and the default baud rate in memory. So I went over all this other setup code in part one. And then of course in part one, we showed in a loop, we have two main function. One is for handling bridge, and then the other one's for handling command mode. So we went over this function in part one, but what I wanna show you is if we type in the plus, if the character read is a plus, then we set our command mode global variable to the data mode, which basically is telling us, are we communicating over Bluetooth or wired serial when we enter command mode? Because we wanna know which interface we entered command mode in so we can change and view the settings from that interface. For the example we saw in the demo, we were using the serial, wired serial, uh, not Bluetooth. So we capture that here. We then print out that we're entering command mode, which we saw in the demo. And then we just clear the serial buffer to make sure there's no you know, stray data in there. So remember, we set this global variable. So once we go back into the main loop, we're gonna hit this function, handle command mode. And when you hit this function, it sets a timer variable to whatever the current millis time is. And then it also declares an exit command mode boolean variable, which it starts out as false. Then we enter this loop. And so we stay in this loop as long as we are in command mode. And there's two ways to exit command mode. You can type in a letter X, either lowercase or uppercase, and that will take you out of command mode. Or if there's no activity in command mode for 60 seconds, the software will automatically exit command mode. So we enter this while loop. And so remember, this is the global variable that captures what mode we're in. If we're not in command mode, it's a zero. But if we are in either wired command mode or Bluetooth command mode, it won't be zero. So this comes from the definition.h file, and this is a one, and then the Bluetooth command mode is a two. So as long as we are equal to or greater than one, we wanna enter command mode or enter this while loop. We then, access this function, which is just a timer function. This is our timer function, checking if we're at 60 seconds. And if we are, then we, with no activity, then we automatically exit command mode. So this Boolean variable will be true if that, six, if that timer hits 60 seconds. So then we have this if statement, and the if statement can be true with two conditions. One, if data is available, and we went over this data available function in part one, and that means someone typed in data to change a setting or view a command setting or something like that. Or if exit command mode is true, we can enter here, which will eventually this Boolean variable will be used to take us out of command mode. But if we enter this if statement based on data available, then we wanna reset our timer. Remember our 60 second timer that only counts up to 60 seconds if there's no activity. We then declare a char. We read in a byte or char data from the serial port. And remember this function we went over in part one, this with the global variable C mode, we can tell if we're in Bluetooth serial mode or if we're using the wired serial terminal. Now remember, one of the commands is an N, lowercase or uppercase. So if that, if we read a lowercase or uppercase N, we know that this might, might be a name command. This function delays for a couple of milliseconds and allows the serial buffer to refill. I found that if I operated this at low baud rates, sometimes that serial buffer would be empty when I tried to read again because I didn't give it enough time to fill up. So I do this short delay based on the command mode I'm in, and then I read the next byte of data. So we know we we know that the user is trying to either query the name or change the name because the first character was an N. So next we read the next one. If it's a question mark, then we know they want to query the, the Bluetooth device name. So we print out a message and we print out the current name. If it's not a question mark and it's an equal sign or space equal sign, then we know they're trying to enter a new name. So here's that same delay function. Then we read, read in a string from the serial buffer. Then we execute this parse Bluetooth device name. And the way we do that is we feed in our global character array, which stores our device name, as well as the string that we read in from the serial monitor. 
So let's look at this parse Bluetooth device name function. Okay, here's that function. And in this function, I'm gonna use a lot of Arduino's built-in string functions. So first, the string that I read from the serial buffer, I'm gonna get its length. Then I'm gonna get the indices or location in its different characters. Remember, string is really just a character array. We're gonna get where we can find a quotation mark. And that's why I have this slash quotation because this tells the Arduino compiler that no, we're, we're, we want this, we want you to read the quotation that's not meant to be a terminating character. So that's why I have that slash mark with the quotation. So this function will return the location of the first quotation mark. So we check if that's in the right place. So what we're doing here is we're making sure the user entered a valid name. And to do that, you have to enclose the name in quotation marks. So first we check the location of the first quotation mark, which should either be at zero or one, because there could be a space before it. So if that if it is there, then we know so far we have a valid name. So next we check the second indices for the ending quotation mark. If that is at the right location, which should be right near the end, then we remove that and we're okay to continue. If, if it was not there, then we do this else statement and we say this is an invalid last character and we return false and we don't save the new name. We then remove the indices, the first one as well as the second one. So we're removing those quotation marks is what I should say. Then we make sure the length of the string after we remove the quotation marks is 15 characters or less. If it's not, then we return that this name is too long and we return false. This else statement returns false if we had an invalid uh, first quotation mark or it wasn't there. If everything works out, we then make sure our character array, our global character array is empty. We set it all to null and then we move the string that the user entered into that character array and we return true. So if we go back up to the function we were looking at right here, if the name was correct or valid, we let the user know and we store it in memory right there. If it wasn't valid, we let the user know. Uh, here is the code for checking if it's a baud rate command, so B. And of course, we can query the baud rate or we can enter the baud rate as a integer. And so very similar code that we had for checking the name, except right here, when we go to store it in memory, that's where we check if it's a valid baud rate. If this if statement is true, then it's an invalid baud rate. If it's false, that means it was a valid baud rate and we set our global baud rate to that value and we let the user know what was entered. And if this is a valid baud rate, this function will store it in memory. Here we have the H command for the help menu, either lowercase or capital H, and we just print out a function that has that whole blurb of the uh, how to use the command mode. If we type in an X, that will take us out of command mode. And also notice we or this with exit command mode Boolean variable. So if this exit command mo mode Boolean variable is true, that means we timed out and we want to exit. If there was an X entered, that also means the user wants to exit. So we print out that we're exiting. We set our command mode global variable to not in command mode and we clear any data in the serial buffer. And then if we get to this else statement, that just means that an invalid command was entered and we print out a message letting the user know. All right, let me check if there was any other functions that we should have reviewed for this. Oh, here is that delay for serial. So this makes sure that I give the serial receive buffer enough time to get filled. So what I do here is I start a variable for my timer. If data is available, then this function will exit right away. If, it, if data is not available yet, it'll delay for a certain amount of time. And this serial delay is in the definitions.h. I think I have it just set to two milliseconds, but I don't remember off the top of my head. So if there's data available, it'll exit, or after two milliseconds, it will exit whether it got data or not. But that gives the serial buffer enough time to fill up no matter what baud rate we're in. And here's that command mode timeout function that we were using to detect if the user had any traffic in command mode for 60 seconds. If not, we exit. So you can see that here. If As long as millis is less than this value, we return false that we shouldn't exit. And if it's true, then we should exit. All right, let's look at the memory handler library. 
Okay, here's my memory handler class. I'm just going to show you the .cpp file. But I call in the EEPROM library. So this is a well-known Arduino library that works across different Arduino platforms. Even though we're using flash memory, we're using the EEPROM library. And then we also have, we're also calling the .h file. We have a global variable for storing the device name. I should say a char array. Here's our constructor function. And here's that initiate memory function. So first we set the EEPROM to the size of our flash memory, which is 512. And, and memory size can be found in the definitions.h file. We then check for our code character, memory code. This is in the definitions.h file. I think it's 88. But the idea is when you program the SP32, it sets the flash memory to some default value, all the flash memory bytes. So by writing this memory code in there or checking if it's there, then we know if memory has been used or not. So that's what this if statement's doing. If it returns true, that means the device's memory has been used in the past after programming. If it's not true, it's the first time we turned on the device after programming it and we want to set our memory code and commit it and return false that this is the first time memory has been used. This set and get function is for the Bluetooth name. So the set function stores the name in memory one byte at a time. That's why we have a for loop. And this get function gets it from memory, right? And we have these predefined memory locations that I define in the definitions.h file. Similar for the set baud rate in memory. Here we do the error checking in this class. And so I just check to make sure it's one of these baud rate settings. If you want to add another baud rate setting, you just would add it to this long if statement. If it's valid, we put it on there and we return true. If not, we return false. And then of course we can get it from memory. I don't do error checking when I, when I retrieve it from memory. You could always add that if you want. And then I have this function for resetting the memory, which I don't think I use. Okay, that's it for building a Bluetooth to serial or UART bridge using ESP32 and Arduino. If you want to access the code, please join my Patreon page. And if you have any questions from the video, use the comment section. Or if you have anything to add, please use the comment section. Thank you for watching.